Hello and welcome back to another Aspects of Archaeology. Now in today's Aspects of Archaeology, we're going to be examining our technique which makes use of lasers. If archaeological fieldwork is about anything, it's firmly about gathering data. Data is the lifeblood of archaeological analysis, and fieldwork is how we get data. This enables people in the future to revisit our findings and examine them carefully for themselves. Good data and good record keeping is everything in archaeology. This is both a standard and a problem, as sometimes drawings just aren't quite accurate enough. Sometimes the details can be hidden from view. A landscape, for example, can often be difficult to traverse and record accurately. And sometimes accuracy is exactly what we need. The better the data, the more comprehensive our analysis. This is where archaeologists not only study the past, but also have one eye on the future. Specifically, in this case, laser technology. Is this to burn back shrubbery, revealing archaeological sites? Or perhaps to present our findings in ever more impressive ways? <laughs> no, no, no. Rather, I'm thinking about the application of lasers in the realm of LIDAR. This stands for light and radar. This is the use of light or lasers in range detecting, like radar. LIDAR, eh? I hear you cry. Tell me more. Why is this useful for archaeology? Radar, that is the use of radio waves to determine the range, altitude, direction or speed of an object like an aircraft, was fully developed by 1934. It relies on transmitted radio waves bouncing off aeroplanes, revealing their location in the sky. LIDAR employs a similar principle, but rather than transmitting radio waves into the sky, the laser is pointed at an object, and the amount of time it takes for it to reflect back is counted. The longer the light takes to reflect, the further away the object is. So 0.5 seconds may equate to this distance, and 0.25 this distance. Don't be ridiculous, man, I hear you cry. We can't possibly see lasers flying around at tenths of a second. How is that possible? Don't worry, LIDAR and related laser measuring machines can do this for you, at a rate of up to 150,000 pulses per second. Often this laser is directed using a rotating mirror within the housing of the machine. As the mirror rotates, the laser effectively scans all the surfaces in front of it, measuring the amount of time it takes for the light to leave the machine, bounce off the surface and return to the machine. In this way, the location of the surface of any object, or any number of objects, can be recorded with extreme precision. Essentially captured by locating a sequence of points across the surfaces in question. This is a relatively quick and efficient way to record the surface of any three-dimensional object, or, for example, the exterior or interior of a building. A bit like the pins in a pin sculpture, the location of each dot, its distance from the machine, work together to give the impression of a three-dimensional surface. Indeed, the more dots, the more detailed the impression, the record can be. With enough dots, almost anything can be recorded. Here, a street corner. Notice the foliage and the details on the building. And with even more dots, whole landscapes can be recorded like sculptures of data recorded by light. LIDAR analysis can even strip away secondary data points, such as foliage in trees, to show the shape of the ground below. Stripping back the canopy, a bit like an x-ray seeing through our skin, revealing details such as ancient earthworks, not conventionally visible from the air. I know what you're thinking, this is amazing. But LIDAR does come with some weaknesses and caveats. As with a sniper, line of sight is crucial. Just like a scope, a laser can't see around corners. Unless you survey from multiple angles, certain details will be lost. For example, here, the corner of the room was obscured by the pillar. 
Another factor is time and the pulse rate of your equipment. In other words, the more dots you're able to survey, the more detailed the image you capture will be. Also, because this is a machine and not a super quick human being, the data it produces is without bias. In other words, it needs interpretation to be understood, to turn it from a sequence of data points to a meaning. This also means that the details and results have to be checked and double-checked, usually through field walking, checking with your own eyes. But this is a basic principle of science anyway. You don't rely on one set of results to draw a conclusion. All of this makes LiDAR, and its appropriate use, a comprehensive data-gathering solution. So now let's take a look at some case studies. How is LiDAR used in the field? Typically, a LiDAR survey is conducted from the air, usually a light aircraft. The news in recent weeks and months have brought us many stories demonstrating LiDAR's ability to record accurately and reveal details of the landscape hitherto hidden to archaeologists. In this case, a whole city was found beneath the jungle canopy in Cambodia. But this story from the New Forest in Hampshire highlights one of the caveats we mentioned. Here, some of the burial mounds which are identified were checked through field walking. An eyeball inspection showed that some of the mounds were in fact piles of wood on the ground, highlighting that LIDAR results must be confirmed. The seaside town of Whitby in North Yorkshire is famous for its atmospheric ruined abbey. This is the place Dracula uses as his British base in Bram Stoker's classic novel. But arguably more dramatic than this is Whitby's coastline, which is subject to some very harsh coastal erosion. In such circumstances, LIDAR has been and can be used to monitor the erosion, giving residents a sense of how quickly things are changing and how dangerous their coastline is. Minute changes in LiDAR scans can hint at dramatic changes to come. This information can be used to protect monuments, but also in the case of Dunwich in East Anglia, hint at when parts of a formerly lost medieval village may be revealed once more, as the coast shifts. LiDAR is also extremely useful in recording and monitoring old buildings, such as here, King's Manor in York which is also the University of York Archaeology Department. It was actually here that I saw LiDAR demonstrated for the first time, with results very similar to these. Now such records are of course very useful for record keeping, but also much like monitoring changes in the coastline, they can be used to monitor the health of a building. Small changes in aspect or the leaning of a wall can be seen using LiDAR. It's also worthwhile considering that all of this digital data can be made available to other archaeologists through geographic information systems. As with everything, the internet is changing how archaeologists approach the analysis and the sharing of data, and thus the conclusions that we come up with together. So, there you have it, LiDAR. A really interesting and useful remote sensing technology. It is high technology as it were, it's not the cheapest of techniques to employ on site. But if you can get access to a, a LiDAR rig, maybe rent one out or, or, or work with a unit who has one, uh, the data gleaned from that, from that technique can be invaluable in gaining a broad stroke uh, observation of a site, um, in, in gaining high uh, resolution uh, uh, records of things like buildings or, or eroding landscapes. Um, it, it is uh, unparalleled in its ability to, to do that uh, accurately but also relatively quickly. Yes, it does need checking on. You do have to check that what you're seeing is what you're seeing. But that's the same with most observations in archaeology and, in fact, science. You know, observations do need to be checked and, uh, and, and rechecked. Um, but uh, the more that archaeologists are using LiDAR, the better we're becoming at finding the right way to use it, the right application, and also uh, the, uh, we're becoming better at actually interpreting the results which we get back from those um, surveys. So, uh, as ever, archaeology is on the cusp of using the latest technology to look at uh, the human past. It's one of those strange things and one of the reasons why I love archaeology. We use uh, really 
uh, we're always looking for new techniques, new ways of looking at very old things. And um, it's what keeps archaeology interesting and exciting. So hopefully this video has been useful or interesting uh, to you, uh, hopefully. Uh, if it has, please do feel free to, to comment below. If you have any further questions, uh, do comment below or send me a message and I'll endeavour to get back to you about them. Um, and of course, uh, if you want to learn more about aspects of archaeology, all you need to do is look uh, in the rest of this series and indeed perhaps even subscribe to, uh, to Archaeosoup on YouTube. Um, so as ever, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye bye.